few mini introductions. Um, I'm Jane Selby, I'm um, primary lead um, in the performance, school's performance and standards team. Um, welcome and thank you for giving up your time. Um, can I also thank um, our two um, uh, literacy experts from two um, of our very best reading schools. Um, only the best for you will do. Um, so we have Leanne Marshall uh, from um, Livingstone. Mm -hmm. Went there today, so Lynn first, so that was not a good move. <laughs> and we've got Sarah Holland from St Peter's Staley Bridge. Um, so thank you very much, and I'm literally going to let you do the rest. Thank you. Thank you. Mm. Hi, everybody. <coughs> so, um, yes, as Jane just said, um, we're both literacy coordinators, so hopefully we'll give you um, a few ideas for your reading sessions with the children. Um, hopefully it's things that you don't already know. Apologies if there is anything that you do already know. Um, so, first, what does this work? Ah, that's, that's fine. That's a question. <laughs> um, so the aims of the volunteer reading pilot that we're doing here is to raise awareness of the reading problem from the same side, um, to improve reading outcomes for what we would recognise as priority children, so the children that are really struggling, um, and to develop partnerships across the borough. So, something else you want to say on that? I think just, you know, the start of those partnerships are um, us all working together here today um, and also working with, with schools. Okay, so the reading problem um, in Tameside. Um, I'm not go actually going to go through all the individual data with you, but what I do want to highlight in all of the data is the, the word below. Basically, Tameside are working below national in many areas. Um, Specific, specifically the reading um, and obviously the aim of this volunteer programme is for you to help the schools in building up that percentage and hopefully going on the other side of uh, the national expectation. So a big area is boys. Okay. Hey John. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, it's been identified that boys are sort of the performing a lot worse than the girls. Um, and the National, National Literacy Trust have noted that girls have a lot more enthusiasm for reading. Um, and nearly twice as many boys in a recent study as girls said they don't enjoy reading at all. Um, many children do struggle with reading. Um, there's a lot of reasons why they might struggle. Um, limited experience with books, so from being very young, just having that exposure to books and being read to um, and just seeing uh, turning the pages, that kind of thing. Speech and hearing problems can have a big effect. Um, poor phonics awareness, which we'll, we'll come to a bit later. Um, reading involves a lot of skills that they need to master, so sort of patterns and sequences, knowing which order letter, letters come in in a word, um, the order of sentences, uh, and then that all having to make sense to them as well. Um, memory is a big thing, remembering what's happened already to help their comprehension. Um, problem solving to decode words. Um, so all of these, multitasking as well, so trying to read it as well as understand it, as well as make sense sort of in the bigger picture of the book. Um, so these are all sort of the problems that children are faced with when it comes to reading. Um, but just a note on boys, some tips really for what you could try to do to try and help the boys. Uh, become a bit more enthusiastic is first of all building trust with them so developing a bit of a rapport with the children um, enabling them to trust you finding out their hobbies um, so the first session which will come to a bit later will probably be a lot of sort of talk but you know once you know that child a bit more you could then have a plan for the reading session you could bring a couple of things along that could be to do with their hobbies um, and things that they like to try and encourage them a little bit more um, about I mean, magazines or newspaper articles. Uh, boys thrive on competition, as we know. Um, so making it really sort of pacey, quite active, um, maybe making it a bit of a competition with them. Um, you know, oh, let's see who can spot this word first, or, you know, little things like that, which again we'll come to a bit later. Um, and we'll introduce some literacy games as well that you could play as part of your session, which might encourage that competition further. Um, and thinking about it like sport as well, so explaining to them that the brain is a muscle which needs to be exercised to, to learn and to improve. 
um, just like they would do in football or any other sport when they're having to train our muscles. Um, there's a little anecdote about ice skating uh, champion. How many times have they fallen over? Probably about thousands, probably. And yet they've still got the gold medal. So, you know, just trying to to make it a bit, make them think of it in a bit of a different way. Mm. Okay. Oh yeah, so we want to see this and not this. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So um, your role as a, a reading volunteer, then. So you'll be working on a one-to-one -one basis um, with a selection of children who have been identified as struggling. Um, with reading and the children are ranged, we originally said from year two to year six, but from the most recent information, I think there's some year threes and then some year sixes as well. Um, so they're going to be like seven, eight, and ten, and eleven, and they will be predominantly boys. So as Sarah said, boys do sometimes struggle in opening up, particularly with reading. Uh, have, I've taught many, many boys over the years, and the, as soon as you say get a book out, you can just see the face, just they'll just switch off straight away. Um, so it's really just opening up um, their imagination back to books again. I've tried boys, I've give, given them iPads, I've given them magazines to read on an iPad, um, football things, just anything to get them hooked into reading. If you can just get them interested in the, the book that they're reading, you're already on to a winner. Um, so your role will be to use some of the strategies that we provide for you today. Obviously, some, you will all come with a range of other ideas. Great if you've got other ideas that you want to add into your um, session with the children, that's absolutely great as well. But it's really just to promote um, the enjoyment of reading and to develop the children's knowledge um, of vocab and comprehension of text. Um, and also being a good role model when you're with the children as well and giving them the opportunity because some of the vulnerable boys particularly that you read with and as Sarah said we, when we were putting this um, powerpoint together we did a bit of research on how to get boys to read and one of them was sit down and read with the dad or the granddad now I thought back to some of the boys that I read they weren't those they didn't have those role models in their lives so they didn't have that opportunity at home to do that so you will be providing that opportunity just to sit and listen to them. And sometimes they might go off on a bit of a tangent. I teach year two and the number of times I'm told, you know, my dog's gone to the vet and I'm trying to teach, you know, like numeracy. <laughs> so you're like bringing it back. But they want to tell somebody, somebody that will actually listen to them. So even though you are there to develop their reading skills, you're also there as a bit of an ear as well to just listen to them. Um, because the boys and, and girls that you'll be reading with, they just want to talk to somebody on a one-to-one -one basis a lot of the time and they don't have that opportunity, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, so just talking about developing um, the relationship with children, which you will, will be doing, um, it's just worth noting safeguarding and confidentiality. Um, safeguarding is obviously for you as well as the children. Um, so when you are working with a child one-to-one, -one, you just need to be aware of <coughs> safe working practice and good practice really. Um, so we would recommend always making sure that you're in a public or shared area where you can be easily heard by other adults and you know there might be people walking past that type of thing just to to protect yourselves as well as um, the children. If you have any concerns about a child or a child's welfare, so for example they may um, develop that relationship with you and they may see you as a trusted adult and they may want to share something with you that they maybe wouldn't share with other adults in school because you're that person that's one-to-one -one with them. They may not always have that opportunity. There might be other children around, other adults around. So, you know, you never know, they might choose you to, to tell somebody to. So if there's anything they say that you think, you know, I think I need to pass this on um, or anything that just concerns you slightly, just make sure that you, you pass that on to the safeguarding person at the school. Um, I know your coordinates at school should be making you aware of who those people are. Um, but yeah, just making sure that gets passed on. And just being, usually in common sense, really, just being aware of appropriate language and um, actions as well. You know, even as simple as just making sure you're not sat too close to them and that kind of thing. Um, it's awful to say it, but you just, you never know. So it's good to just, just note it down and to be aware of that. Okay, so the importance of re reading is all around us. 
So this is your first bit of interaction. Um, who, tell me something you have read today. Oh, hands up, I'll just shout out. Something you've read today. A report. A report. Something you've read today. Text message. Emails. I was reading road signs on the way here, trying to make sure I didn't get lost. Anything else? Building name names. names. Yeah. <laughs> so we just we do we just take reading for granted. Do we just make we just know we can do it and therefore if we are able to get around. Um, but it is also at the heart of everything we do in school. Um, you know, we're teaching topic, we're teaching science, history, geography, all of those things, maths, everything. They're expected to read in all of those areas. So even though you're going in specifically to help them with reading normally a book, if they can't do that, then they are going to be struggling in all the other areas in school. Um, so it's really, really essential for the child's success in school. Reading is just at the heart of every single subject in school. Um, so if they're struggling with that, they, they're probably going to be struggling with a lot of other subjects as well. Um, and all too often, the barriers that they face in the other subjects, it's because they, they, they can't read. That's why they struggle in the other subjects. Um, I taught a, a child last year, and she was an absolute whiz at mental maths. She was the fastest person on, when we did our carpet session. Mental maths, it was so quick, but she, was read, she couldn't read very well. She really, really struggled with reading. So as soon as it came to word problems, she was just really, really struggling. But our actual, if you took the numbers out of it, she would have been the best in the class, but unfortunately, a lot of maths comes through problem solving. So she really, really struggled, and I really felt for her because we really pushed on her reading to help her, but it was just stopping her from, she would have literally been the top of the class in maths if she could have read, but the reading was just holding her back. Um, but it's also, as well, understanding what they're reading. So a lot of children, we could say parrot, they parrot the words at the book, so they will read the words often, um, but they don't actually understand. So that's what another part of your reading um, programme involves. It's not just getting them to read the words to you, it's the discussion about what it actually means. Do they understand the books that they, they, they're reading? Um, because often, if, if you have any children, specifically with the EAL, um, and English as an additional language, they might learn how to say the words, but they might not actually have the context of reading. Um, again, many, many years ago, I've got many stories because I've been teaching for 17 years, so lots of stories. Um, a child with EAL, we read a book about a beach all the way through, and at the end he just looked at me and I said, oh, did you enjoy that book? He said, I don't understand what a beach is. So he'd never been to a beach, he came from Africa and he'd never been to a beach. So I was there hopping on like, oh, you can build sandcastles. And he was looking at me like, I don't understand how you would build castles on this. I was just showing him pictures and he just looked at me like, I don't know what a beach is. So you just assume that, because I knew what a beach was, that he would know what a beach was and he didn't have a clue. So when I was talking about building castles, he thought I meant you know medieval castles and you build it with a bucket and he didn't have a clue. So we had to go right back to actually discussing the beaches, you know, sand and water and it was it was all right back to there. Um, and as we've put on here, reading opens a world of creativity and imagination for children. So once they get into books, you know, the more books they read, the better the writing will be as well because they'll read about a character and then they'll want to include that type of character in their own writing. So it just all really interlinked, isn't it? Yeah. We've just put a couple of nice quotes on there as well, yeah. So the more you read, the more things you will know, the more that you learn, the more places you'll go. That was Dr. Seuss. And reading gives us a place to go when we have to stay where we are. So basically saying that reading can take you away to a different place, an imaginary place or somewhere else, um, even though you have to stay where you are. Okay, so reading in primary schools, it starts in the early years foundation <coughs> stage, which is nursery and reception, um, with phonics, um, which we'll come to afterwards. Um, children have the opportunity to share stories in class and at home. Um, independent reading books, some of which we brought today for you to have a look at afterwards, um, are taken home to read with parents. Um, in class we'll do guided reading, which is kind of a small group, um, reading with the teacher um, and us sort of guiding them through, talking about vocabulary, checking their understanding of the text and quite often that's at a more challenging level than their independent reading book because the reading book that they bring to you they 
hopefully we'll be able to read um, sort of read the words but Gerd Green tries to extend that a little bit more and shared reading in class as well um, which is sort of all just reading together um, so we might read aloud from the board or from the book um, Stories and non-fiction texts are often used as a stimulus for writing um, so we'll use authors as good examples of writing um, and then children can kind of become the author if you like um, Children have access to school libraries I know at our school they can go and borrow a book and change it weekly, I'm sure it's the same um, at yours. And quite often there's book clubs or reading clubs to encourage reading. Um, so you know there is a, a wide range of things that goes on in primary school and it's very centred around reading. Um, so I know I've, we've both, I've spoke to a couple of you before about phonics. Um, as Sarah uh, mentioned, phonics is started right down in nursery and reception and this is where we start um, our reading. Um, so the purpose of phonics is to develop the phonemic awareness. So phonemes, does anybody know? It's on there, the smallest unit of spoken language, does anyone know what a phoneme is? You said you said you knew something about phonics, I was hoping that you might say something. <laughs> no, but I can do some of the phonics. <laughs> so phoneme is the sound. So